Hello everyone, welcome back to the Back Post Podcast. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about Chelsea and Graham Potter. He's had an incredible start to his Chelsea career as manager. Uh, so I thought I'd dive in a little bit, talk about that, talk about the weekend's results. Also, a few other things, of course. Arsenal-Liverpool happened. City is still dominant. Some other things happened. So I'm going to talk about it all in this podcast. Yeah, I know it's just me as well today. It's, I know it's annoying. Sorry, I know it was just Josh last week. He's been on holiday. I've been on holiday. Life keeps getting in the way, but we're still putting out a podcast every single Monday on this channel, even if it's just me chatting away. Uh, so thank you for watching and listening, all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's get into it, shall we? Chelsea, Graham Potter, since the break, has been a revelation. We've won three on the bounce, three and three in October, and it's been... It's been wonderful. It really has been a fun, exciting time. I think the break came, the international break, and obviously then also the break before that with the Queen's passing gave Chelsea a lot of time, gave Potter a lot of time to just stop the kind of craziness that has been start that has been the start of this season. It's really been, you know, just a whirlwind of a <laughs> of a season so far. So I think it's exactly what the club needed, just a stop button uh, a little bit, even though. You know, some players went away, uh, of course, but it was just good to stop. And that has really, really showed some good things for Chelsea. And, and Potter has been able to, you know, start his job well. Uh, so, obviously, we, we beat Palace. We've already spoken about that. Uh, we beat Milan in the week 3-0 with a really competent, great performance uh, against Milan, who are, you know, the giants of Serie A right now. You know, one of the best teams that in that league. We made them look pretty rubbish. And now, obviously, there's a conversation to be had about the, the difference in leagues. Uh, and I think that's come out a lot now. But I think still to to beat Milan, especially where we've been this year so far, to beat Milan so comfortably, it's a massive achievement for for us. And, and, and I was absolutely buzzing with that. And then that kind of brings us on to this Wolves game, which is uh, one of the most exciting you know games we've had all season, one of the most fun ones. You know, football's about fun. <laughs> Ultimately, football's about fun. And you know what? Chelsea this season hasn't been a whole lot of fun, has it? Until until now. Uh, and that's really, really made me happy. So I think the first thing that you have to talk about is that Potter left out a lot of players from the Milan game. Milan was a great performance, a team performance, solid. And then the first thing you notice in that lineup is that a lot of players are missing. You've got Chile out. I think he, you know, Watching his fitness right now, Reese James, arguably our best player, he was out. Aubameyang scored two goals in those two games, he was out. Anyone else that was out? Sterling, another one of our like contenders for best player, also out. So all straight away, you're a bit like, okay, what's going to happen here? Is this a wise mood? What's part of doing? But ultimately, he it's he's just been smart. This is a massive squad full of depth, and he's you know. This is the first time he's probably had that, you know what I mean? Like a massive, massive squad full of international talent. So he's probably, you know, licking his lips. He's playing a few players here, seeing who does well in what system. Also, I think more than that, more than the system thing, I think he's just like, just keeping everyone happy. You know, a lot, a lot of the problems at the end, back in the Tuchel was a lot of players weren't happy. Now, don't get me wrong, some of those players didn't deserve to be playing anyway. So I didn't, I didn't you know, hate Tuchel for that, but... Potter seems to have come in and, and obviously there's the whole new manager bounce thing that happens, but he seems to have come in and is still in a, a bit more of a happiness and a bit more of joyness into the squad. And giving players minutes, he's giving players minutes. So, you know, Pulisic started this game, someone that might not have started a game beforehand. You know, resting players like Sterling, like we're not relying on him because we know we've got a talented player like Pulisic who can play that well, just hasn't done recently. And Potter's kind of putting that faith into him. And I think that's a that's a great you know a great thing to have, and it's really showing you know well on the pitch because players like Bundesic had a great game, other players like Chalaba who hadn't really had a sniff, who, although we knew was competent, got you know his chance. I think some of the younger lads as well like Broya and Chupamenka, they've come on and you know they've been substituted on and they're getting their minutes as well. So like overall, I think that was the first thing I wanted to point out really was the fact that like Potter's really sharing out the minutes here. He's really kind of putting it out and I really do like that. So I want to talk about the attack real quick because it's, it's really interesting. I've already mentioned his name here, Christian Pulisic. Um, he's, he's come in this game, had a really good game as I've mentioned. Uh, 
And it's a difficult one with Pulisic because he's been rubbish recently. And the frustration lies within the fact that we know he's a good player. We've seen it in a Chelsea shirt, in a Dortmund shirt. We have seen him be a good player, a great player. But it's so far a few between, so, so, so far a few between. Like, just little splits here and there. Then he gets injured here. And then he comes back and he's not as good. And then he might get injured again. And listen, I know injuries aren't his fault, but also just the performances aren't always there with him. But you know he's a talented player. Uh, but Potters, um, Potters came in and gave him a chance here. And another part of kind of like, you know, tactical masterclass here, masterclass, but you know, it's a tactical tweak. He's put him at left wing back. Now, we've already seen Sterling play left wing back this season. And also, I, we definitely saw Tuchel experiment with this. You know, I think he put Pulisic left wing back. hudson Odoi very early on played left wing back or right wing back. It's interesting. So instead of playing an out-and-out -out winger, he's playing as a wing back role. This then allows a front four, which is nice. So in attack... It's like a four at the back, four at the front. That's what it kind of results into with him because he's been he is able to change and then he can get back if we you know getting overloaded or whatever. Um, so that's brilliant and I, and it really does work. I think it, it worked with Sterling really well. Uh, but then you know resting Sterling, he's been a great player so far. Let's give him a rest. Pulisic, your turn to shine, and he does. And he comes in, he slots in, and he does it really well. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And then like I said, the front four. It created this beautiful front fluid for no Aubameyang in there, so there's no real target man, but it doesn't really matter because I think, you know, you look at the opposition of Wolves, they've got a great defence. I know they've got a lot of injuries right now, but their defence is normally resolute and hard to beat. So it's better to play a fluid system than a striker system. Again, another great thing about Potter, he's kind of saw that and gone, right, this is what we need to do. So he's overloaded them. These players, and also the players... Uh, Connor Gallagher, Mason Mount, Havertz, and Pulisic. That's like the front four intertwining, quickly passing it between each other, getting it around the back. It was beautiful, lovely little touches. I think, you know, all four of them deserve praise, but, you know, Mason Mount got man of the match, absolutely deserved. He's had a pretty shite season so far, but again, showed us this game, what he's about and what we like about Mason is that he's got that tenacity, he's got that directness, he's got that aggression and he makes things happen. He's always done that for Chelsea. Maybe not scoring a load or maybe even not assisting loads. He got two assists this game, but he always makes things happen. He takes the ball, he puts it, pushes it around, blah, blah, blah. It's brilliant. And Conor Gallagher really complimented that as well, doing pretty much the same thing with his you know, youthful kind of excitement he was getting it about a little bit Havertz then dropping in a little bit letting movement play it was a beautiful fluid system uh, and you know you got to give credit to the players uh, the attacking players for that but also the midfielders um, Jorginho and Loftus-Cheek really you know kept the tempo going really well I don't hate that as a double pivot right because let's talk about Loftus-Cheek real quick let's talk about him I fucking love him. I've loved him for ages. I don't think I'm... I'm not one of those people that have been criticising him. So I feel, like, proud right now. I can be like, yeah, I told you, lad. He's so... He's, I love what he can do with the ball. He's a really good dribbler. He's a really commanding midfielder. And he's very versatile. Potter's going to love this. Potter's going to love the versatility of him. He's like John O'Shea. You know, when John O'Shea got played in every single position, Loftus Sheik isn't too far off that. It's, he's been striker, attacker, midfielder. And he's already also been a right back. Just sticking him, him in goal next. And he will do a job because Ruben, he's been brilliant. I've really enjoyed his performances so far against Wolves. He was brilliant in that midfield, partnering with Jorginho, you know, building the tempo, taking it left, taking it right, taking it direct. I think that's one thing that he has. Jorginho is limited in that fact he will go left, right, back. Very rarely goes forward. When he does, he's good, but very rarely. Last the seat will take the ball and run. He'll run, which then creates just chaos, which then allows the, the attackers to find space. And it all really worked really really well so I'm, I'm a big fan of that and then we talk about the defense i think the defense has you know without Thiago silva in that lineup i think every chelsea fan will go and you know swallow a bit and go shit what's happening because he's been our rock he's been our guy for so long and it, you know it's, it's not great that we're relying on you know a 38 year old to be our best defender at the club but that's where we've been left but you know part has rested in this game which is nice to see you know a bit of rest for Thiago, and then Koulibaly stepped up, you know, Koulibaly also not <laughs> not the youngest bloke around, but he stepped up and became a bit more of a leader in that back line and the back three. Um, and yeah, he played really well. Chalaba, I've already mentioned him. We know Chalaba possesses a good bit of talent. He was great for us last season, like a bit of a breakthrough season for him. Not really seen a sniff this season, which is a bit of shame. Thought I'd definitely see him a lot more since Rudiger went, but obviously not. But then, you know, 
stepped in today and Potter's put a bit of trust in him and he will, you know, show you why you should put trust in him. He's a great, great defender, maybe one for the future, one for right now for rotation and one for the future, which is great. Uh, and then also, I think you've got a massive shout out to Asby, our captain, captain. Looked five years younger than the against Wolves. He's been he's been slowing down recently. We can all see it. He looks a bit off it. It's a massive shame because you know he's been such a great servant for the club. Won it all uh, and just been there when we needed him. He's looked a bit off it. Not even just this season, but end of last season. You know he started to look off the ball. And with Rhys James behind him or now in front of him, um, who's a world class right back, it's hard to want to play Aspilicueta. But he played today. Rhys James was rested or not today? The other day. And um, he was brilliant. He was fucking brilliant. He was five years young. He was bombing forward. You see his heat map. He's bombing forward. He's getting back. He's putting tackles in. He's just. He was just great. He, he was pinging balls about. He was doing what a wing back should do. Now I don't know how many performances he's got like that in him left. But if we can utilize that every now and then, not rely on him, not rely on him to be right back every single week, but put him in when needed. That's invaluable. That's a brilliant option to have. He's already got his two-year contract. He can still play a job for Chelsea. Also, he's, he's still got that captain quality about him. So he needs a, a, a big amount of praise as well. So overall, yeah, as you can tell, I'm pretty gassed with Chelsea. I think there's a lot of good things going on at the club right now. I think Potter's you know, been a bit of a revelation, a good, you know, a, a good manager of signing, I think. I was too sure as much as I, I was sad to see him go. I do believe Tuchel could have turned it around. Potter's coming in and doing a good job. And now I just hope that we, we do build this project with Potter because I do like the guy. I think he's very, very, very good manager and he could become an, a world-class manager. And if he can become that with Chelsea, fucking brilliant. That would be amazing. Uh, so, yeah, big up to the boys, Chelsea. Excited for the Milan game coming up. Um, at the San Siro, be a different challenge, be a different test uh, for us. Be interested to see who we start this one because genuinely you don't know at the minute. But nonetheless, just absolutely buzzing for that game, which is coming up very, very soon. Uh, that's enough about Chelsea. I think uh, I've spoke. That's the main talking point of this podcast. Uh, I'm going to move on now to some of the other games that have happened in the Premier League this weekend. So welcome back to part two. Thank you for staying with us. If you're not a Chelsea fan, you enjoyed that first half, stick around for this half. I'm just going to talk about the football. Uh, what has happened? Because, listen, a lot happened this weekend. Uh, I'll start quickly and briefly with City. They just, they're just they still dominating, aren't they? They're still dominating. 4-0, rolled over Southampton like they weren't even there. Southampton, not, not at their full peak powers, but not bad by any means, but they just rolled them over. It wasn't a Haaland show this time, although he still got his goal. It wasn't all about him. I think Cancelo had a fantastic game. And overall, it's really hard to see City stopping, isn't it? It's hard to see where we slow them down. I don't know where that comes in, but something's got to happen. Um, but that being said, they're not even top of the table. We have to talk about it. It's the elephant in the room. Arsenal are still top of the table after beating Liverpool. 3-2 uh, in a very, very exciting game. Arsenal scored within like one minute and from there you kind of had that sinking feeling like, yeah, this is happening. When it, when it comes to Arsenal-Liverpool, I don't want either team to win, obviously, but I feel like seeing Arsenal being so dominant is tough for us Chelsea fans and I know it's definitely tough for Tottenham fans. Um, but, you know, me and Josh have been quite quick to discredit them to the start of the season and you'll know that and you'll see that. But I think we have to now hold our hands up after their last couple of games, they've and they've overcome a few tests. They really have. They've they've been good. They beat Tottenham. Um, you know, Tottenham capitulated that game. So I think you know you could kind of say more that than Arsenal winning. But you know, still they won that game. They've they're still blasting through Europe pretty well. And then they are now beating Liverpool, who last season went on to win the two cup domestic cups, could have won the Champions League, nearly won the Premier League. Um, they, you know, and they just, they didn't roll them over. Liverpool put up a good performance, but Liverpool's defence just, just eroded away. Um, and yeah, Arsenal look dominant. I think it's, it's, it's worrying. I just, I, I'm still sceptical. Can they keep this up? I think they are riding a good amount of momentum, a good amount of skill, but also a good amount of luck. At the moment, I will say, you know, Tottenham, if they didn't capitulate, if they, you know, 
could have got their heads together. They could have quite easily not have won that game. Liverpool, it, they, you know, although you're beating Liverpool, which is the name, their defence right now is just just a shambles, a shadow of what it once was. Um, so, you know, and also they keep playing their consistent, like first 11, there's about 12, 13 players there that will consistently get these games. And then Europe, they're switching it about, but like, how long will that last? How long will it be until one of those players, one of those pivotal players does get injured and then you look at their bench, is it strong enough? I don't know. Um, obviously right now you can't really say anything, but it, it, it'll be interesting to see if Arsenal can keep this up, uh, again, especially against City who have all that depth. They have all that power behind them. Um, but Arsenal seem to be the challengers this season. Um, and th listen, if they can build on this season as well, like, listen, I, you know, we, we, we're quick to shoot down Arsenal on this channel. Of course we are. But, you know, if Arsenal do this season, keep top four, maybe win a cup, have this, keep these core group of players, add better players in as well, who knows what can happen in the next couple of years. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint. But but yeah, and then talk about Liverpool a little bit. What's going on? What is going on? They are just absolutely shitting the bed. Trent is a shadow of who he once was. I think his defensive capabilities are now showing a bit more. Um, he has always been a world-class attacker, like one of the best you know, in the league attacking, funny enough, but defending, he's not not bad by any means, not bad at all. Like, there's definitely worse defenders, but it's not his strong point. I think that's fair to say. Um, and the system's always allowed him to not have to defend too much because he doesn't have to. That's not the way Liverpool play. But now Liverpool have been found out a little bit. They've ran out of their momentum. They've, they've kind of ran out of that mentality. Now you're kind of seeing what will happen to a player like him. Um, but, you know, that's not to say he won't come back, of course. And, you know, you can say the same thing about Van Dijk. Van Dijk hasn't been great. He's not been covering himself in gory and he's probably one of the best centre-backs we've ever seen. Not ever seen. God, that's a very, you know, <laughs> it's a big thing to say. But he's one of the best centre-backs in the Prem, really, right now. And even he's capitulated. So it's just mad to see. And I think it's just burnout. I think it is just burnout. Last season, they played the most amount, 68 games, was it? Just so many games. They really did. They went every. They went to the end of every competition. They went to the end of each Cups and they won, of course, against Chelsea. Great. Um, and then the Premier League, they took City to the last day, just missed out on one point. And then even the Champions League, just losing out to Real Madrid. That is exhausting. That doesn't just wash away over a summer. You can't just go to the beach and forget about that. That's a burnout. And then when you start this season slowly, like they have, how would you pick yourself back up after all that's happened? I think that's what's happening right now. So it's difficult for Liverpool. They are struggling right now, which is kind of crazy to think because uh, I think a lot of people had them like up there again this season. But I think they're slowly just running out of juice. They really, really need to invest again into that squad, rejuvenate, get some younger players in because a lot of those players now are getting on. Uh, and I think they, they haven't done the business they need to do to keep up with City. Um, so there's that. We'll move ahead to Spurs. Not loads to say about Spurs. They managed to beat a, a great Brighton team. Brighton have been brilliant this season. They've, you know, Potter's left and they've gone and got a great manager in as well. Um, Brighton really know how to do things right in this league and they're definitely like a mainstay now and a really exciting, fun team. Uh, and a lot of teams should look at Brighton to see that's how it's done. Um, but nonetheless, Spurs managed to beat them, although they got they got. They were dominated, really, I think. I didn't really watch the game, but, you know, look at all the stats. You watch the highlights, everything like that. They look like they've been dominated. The stats say so. Uh, but that, again, doesn't matter when you win. When you're Tottenham, when you're Conte and, you're ha and Harry Kane's getting that one goal to secure the three points, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's just one of those things to see, like, can they keep it up? Can they keep this level of intensity up? Can they keep getting away with these wins? Because... That's what it feels like right now. It feels like they're getting away with it. And, you know, that doesn't last forever. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with that. There's also the Conte factor, of course. He's starting to moan a bit, and he? He's starting to moan a little bit. He's starting to niggle and need more players, blah, 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 even though they backed him heavily. Um, that's just a small little, you know, bit of spice to this story. You know, what's Conte doing? How's he going to affect this? But I think Spurs are all in on Conte. I think they are just going to be like, right, whatever else you need in January, do it because we need to keep challenging. And the last thing I'm going to talk about in this podcast is the Everton United, uh, United, Everton United, 
the Everton versus Manchester United game, uh, late game on the Sunday. Kind of a weird one to see a late game on a Sunday, but it was good. Um, Everton, you know, looked so strong to start off with. They looked really, they came out and they were firing. They looked fluid. The, the counter-attacks were on. They were winning the ball back in midfield. That new signing, Onana, looks really good. Gordon's still keeping up the pace. They looked quite exciting and fun. And they're not shit, <laughs> which is nice. I mean... I have I obviously have this small agenda with Everton now because of Frank Lampard being the manager. For, for since you know since he got took the Chelsea job, he's been really killed of being a really rubbish average manager. And I never thought that, and I never saw that. I've, he's definitely got something about him that will be a good manager. Uh, and I think he's showing that again now. At Everton, I think he showed it at Chelsea what he did, where he was taking us was brilliant but the board obviously fought otherwise and then now he's gone to Everton they were looking like they were going to get relegated uh, it was looking bleak everyone was like oh he's a shit manager he's obviously kept them up which is an achievement I think because I think a lot of people just called it dead and buried uh, but now this year they're mid-table they're, they're stringing a few good results together they're playing better football their defence has tightened up a little bit with Tarkovsky and Cody great defensive partnership actually the attack isn't all there but they've got exciting players they're doing something, and I think Frank deserves credit for that. So they obviously started the game well, but didn't win it. <laughs> so I'm, all that being talked, but they didn't win this game. It's United, though. It's United, and it's a United who have Anthony, who's on fire right now. What a baller he! I'm, I don't want to like him, but I like him. He's a good footballer. He doesn't do much, but he's got a rocket on him. He's got this like weird arrogance about him. And I do like it. He's a bit of a Chelsea player, to be honest. We should have maybe gone in for him. I don't know. He kind of went under the radar a bit, bit, but they've got a good player in Anthony, I think. And then Ronaldo scoring his 700th goal. So much controversy with Ronaldo right now. Been, he's a bench player. Come on off the bench. Uh, Martial was injured, I believe, and gets his goal. Gets his goal and pretty much wins the game. Uh, that's what he'll do. He got he got given the time and and he he put the ball away. Doesn't mean to say that Ronaldo is the answer for United. He definitely isn't. Um, I think he's been a little bit of a problem. If I'm honest, not the problem, but a problem. Um, but Ten Hag, you know, utilized him here in the right way. Got he got his team to get the goal and they won the won the game and they're in the top four now. I think or top five, <laughs> one of those two. Uh, so United, like as much as like when Everton scored, you could see like crisis mode happening. They're not they're not in crisis. They're still floating on by and doing well. And I think that's it for me. It's a very short podcast, um, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, it, you know, it's hard to talk when it's just me. But I hope you enjoyed that. I really do. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be back doing podcasts every single Monday like normal. Uh, me and Josh will be getting back together again soon to talk about the football. Uh, so I appreciate you sticking with us. We're still bringing out an episode every single week. Um, if you made it this far into the video or into the podcast, I appreciate you. Make sure you give us a like or a subscribe on whatever platform you're listening or watching. Uh, go check out all our social media. We've been posting on TikTok recently as well, clips as well, and that's a lot of fun. And we, you know, we really do enjoy doing stuff like that. So. Uh, it would it'd mean the world to me and also Josh if you, uh, you know, just support us in any way you can uh, on the social medias, giving it all the ratings, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. I love you all. And make sure you tell your dad about this podcast. <laughs>